Disconnect power to the device before servicing. Open door and chalk open using a wedge. Remove cover screws from center case chassis. Remove rail screws from center case chassis. Remove center case chassis cover. Remove rail end cap screws. Disconnect Molex connectors from control board. Remove end cap mounting bracket screws and carefully navigate around wires. Slide rail away from center case chassis and take to a workbench. Place full rail assembly push side down and remove the four Phillips flathead screws from the mount and discard screws. Do not reuse old screws. Place full rail assembly upright on bench and remove rail insert. Disconnect motor controller from the ribbon cable in the rail. Slide push rail assembly away from bottom rail assembly. Using the hook side of the retaining ring removal tool, spin the retaining ring until its open section is visible. Place the end of the tool against the open section of the ring and push the retaining ring down, removing it from the pivot pin. Discard retaining ring. Remove the pivot pin and push aside for reuse. Now lift and remove the motor and pivot assembly along with the pivot spring from the rail keeping the push rail top side down on the bench. Take replacement motor assembly and assemble the connecting arm and spring to the assembly ensuring that the white bushings are installed to the connecting arm assembly. Invert the motor assembly and assemble back into the push rail. Return the pivot pin to the connecting arm assembly using an Allen key and ensuring that the D side of the pivot pin matches the D hole in the rail. Taking a new retaining ring from the M56 kit, insert the retaining ring into the installation tool and slide the ring onto the pivot pin, ensuring that the ring snaps into place over the pivot pin. The motor kit is now secure in the push rail. Depress the front pivot and connecting arm assembly to be flush with the edge of the rail. Invert the rail assembly and slide the push assembly into the bottom mounting rail until the mounting plate screw holes align with the four holes in the back side of the mounting rail. Assemble new mounting plate screws to the rail. Now connect the ribbon cable connector to the motor controller and clip the motor in place to the end of the mounting rail. Now assemble the black plastic wire barrier into the rail which snaps into place into two notches on the mounting plate bracket. Ensure that wires are not in a position to be pinched. Slide rail insert onto rail ensuring that the wire harness is clear of the insert. Now return the rail assembly to the door, assembling the rail to the center case chassis. Assemble center case chassis screws to rail. Now return the rail mounting end cap bracket to the door with two screws. Now make the E-Links cable connections and store the wires in the end of the rail, being careful to avoid pinching the hard angles of the wires. Before installing the end cap, run an operational check to ensure the device operates when switched. If LED is dark or unlit, the controller microprocessor is not active. Confirm connections and incoming power. If LED has a solid light, input voltage is dropping out of operating range. Check wire run and power supply output. If LED has two flashes, followed by a pause, this indicates sensor or motor issues. Call the 1-800 number for assistance. If LED has three flashes, followed by a pause, this indicates a mechanical issue. Call the 1-800 number for assistance. LED will flash steadily when in correct operational mode. Return the end cap and the center case cover to the device. Assemble the end cap with the two machine screws and the center case cover with the four machine screws.
Finally, with the covers in place, do another operational check to ensure the device operates to specifications.